How's it going, everybody? It is episode 94 here on Hawaii Football Now. Jordan Helly Hunter Hughes with you. As always, we record this Wednesday, June 14th, uh, 6.45 or so a.m. in the morning, Hawaii time. Uh, Sets release this tomorrow, June 15th, as we always do on Thursdays every week that we've been doing uh, for the previous 93 weeks. Uh, as we kind of count down, count up, I suppose, is really the proper term on our way to uh, to 100, uh, which we hopefully will have for you later on this summer. Big thanks to Spectrum Mobile, Hawaii USA Federal Credit Union as well for sponsoring our episode. We got our guy Jonathan on the controls producing this episode as always. A uh, quick little opening drive as we get into it, Hunter, something that uh, I know you have taken keen interest in, uh, the Aloha Stadium Instagram account. Uh, which I follow. I don't know if you follow it. That's a pretty good follow. Um, okay. And especially now that there's not much going on there. Um, they post some nostalgic things and whatnot, some some actual tangible updates like on the swap meet and whatnot. But anyway, they posted kind of this, um, I wouldn't say it was a cryptic Instagram post, but there's a giant crane positioned below where the scoreboard is or like the the big video scoreboard thing is. Um, and, uh, the caption was like on the move. I think that's what it was or some, something along those lines, like on the move or things happening or, you know, something like that. And so the implication was that the scoreboard is being moved. Um, again, it didn't actually show the physical scoreboard being moved. The crane wasn't necessarily hooked up to anything right there. Uh, but it was in close proximity, uh, in what looked like, um, perhaps the beginning work of perhaps moving the scoreboard. So. Just, just wanted to put that on your radar, Hunter. Um, and wow. uh, if you see some giant thing driving down the freeway, um, you know, maybe, maybe that's it. Because uh, apparently they've they've started some work. This was yesterday. Maybe I should go back and check on the Aloha Stadium Instagram see if they've posted anything new. But uh, maybe just a little tease, a little tease there for the folks. Yeah, maybe uh, you know. It seems like Aloha Stadium's uh, Instagram team or whatever social account this was. Uh, still thinks that Instagram is a picture only app. I would love to see some video. I'd love to see some video of them getting up on that thing and maybe unscrewing it. Uh, some sights and some sounds from, uh, from the action taking place, Jordan. But uh, you know what? We are certainly beggars uh, in this situation. So we cannot choose how this can be done. So some action is better than no action um, on kind of that same note. Uh, the UH uh, football team social posted a bunch of up-to-date pictures of what the stadium looks like. Uh, sorry, the uh, TC Ching mm. Athletic Complex, that they're creating a stadium down there, um, as well as kind of where that new sta- uh, scoreboard is going to go over on the back of um, the Les Marikami. And it looks awesome. The, the, the little the updates and the just sheer number of uh, more seats and bleachers that they've added to TC Ching. It's, it's incredible. Jordan, it feels like a stadium, like with, with proper tunnels to run out of on um, both the, the East and West sides of, um, uh, of the, the end zones down there. It's, it's incredible. So um, that's getting me really excited. And really the last piece right now is that, stinking scoreboard so uh yeah you you got my hopes up my friend there you go yeah the the the, looking at it now the crane right there by the scoreboard uh and it the caption on the 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 instagram story this is an instagram story by the way that that expires in like six hours i know about stories good yeah yeah uh something exciting is happening and it's got one of those little stickers that says on the move uh so there you go that's the update that's what we got for you because we're uh we're hard-hitting investigators here on hawaii football now only the best Uh, yeah, so that's uh, we just wanted to give that update to the folks there. All right, before moving on, I want to remind you that Hawaii Football Now is brought to you by Hawaii USA Federal Credit Union. Originally opened in 1936 as a credit union for educators, Hawaii USA has inspired a culture of giving that is rooted in education and has since become Hawaii's largest credit union and expanding to other areas of community need that impact financial health, including health care, housing, and hunger. To learn more, please visit HawaiiUSAFCU.com. All right, game time here on on episode 94 um you mentioned the stadium uh at tc ching being rounded out like quite literally adding some some corners 
uh, to that seating arrangement down there. I'm with you. It's starting to take shape. It's it's uh, it's kind of exciting um, because I, I think it feels a little bigger, right? Um, not just capacity wise, but I think like elevating the level of the facility and and feeling like a little more big time. Uh, of course, that means more seats, more tickets for you to potentially buy. Season ticket renewals are now out. This was um, kind of released last week. Uh, and uh, if you go to the website, there's a message from Coach Chang that says, quote, the run and shoot is officially back. The Brotherhood is dedicated to a brand of football we all know and appreciate. And I want to be the first to confirm everyone's hopes, end quote there, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and I think he's very much leaning into it. Right. There had been the reports. It had been talked about in news articles and things like that. And obviously, if you were out at spring practice, uh, pretty evident what's going on uh, in terms of the offense. But, um, you know, for them to to lean into it. Right. And, and I think very much own what uh, what everybody kind of knows has been going on. And uh, I think the other thing, it, it, the marketability of it. Right. When you've got when you can label your offense, whether it's a true run and shoot or anything like that but just put a label on it you put it on shirts you put it on stickers you put it on merch um and uh hopefully you can slap it on some season tickets as the the sales hopefully go well here uh in an expanded tc chain capacity hopefully we slap on some scores too that's the that's the real point um, that's yes uh, hopefully we can put some numbers up there on the scoreboard um but uh didn't we already know this jordan um i feel like it's been as yeah, yeah, it wasn't a secret, that's for sure. This yeah. is a revelatory. I feel like it was as uh, official as unofficial as it could be, or unofficially official. There, there we go. Um, I, I get that this is probably all part of the getting excited for the season, uh, the season tickets, what, what have you. Um, interesting that he officially went there, though even before Mountain West Media Day, um, which will be in just under a month's time in uh, July, whenever they go to Vegas. Um, sometimes coaches like to keep stuff like that kind of close to the chest and just let teams figure it out. Um, officially declaring that we're shifting to an offense. Um, I, I kind of like it. i uh, got nothing to hide. Uh, sometimes other coaches can get kind of, uh, you know, conspiracy theory um and and worried and kind of uh paranoid on what other teams are going to think or going to adjust to us but hey this is what we're going to do come beat us that's kind of that's kind of the stance that I get here it's kind of fun yeah right you got to you got to own it a little bit um you got to feel kind of comfortable in your own skin uh you got to feel comfortable in your own identity and and I think you know you could you could speak to this Hunter but um you know, the, the beauty of the run and shoot over the years is you didn't need to really hide anything. It wasn't like you were fooling teams with trickery or anything like that. Um, it's line up in your defense and we'll, uh, we'll make you wrong. Right. In a lot of ways. Um, and, and that's kind of how um, the beauty of the run and shoot has, has been able to be so effective over the years and morph and whatnot. Um, it's, it's not necessarily some, some tricky misdirection offense. Like it's, it's misdirection in the sense that uh, if you go one way, we'll 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 adjust the route and go the other way. So uh, I like it. I like leaning into it. It's yeah. going to be pretty big. Um, and so uh, this, I think, is just a, a further evolution in the branding and the um, the the quest to to continue to build the support around the program while also, you know, as you point out, um, they got to score <laughs> touchdowns. They need touchdowns. That'll uh, that'll uh, signal, I think, the official. Um, That'll be the official signal that the run and shoot is alive and well. Yeah. Yeah. If we're, if we're letting it rip, you know, 40, 50 times a game, giving Shager uh, a ton of reps uh, and this, uh, this receiving core that we're kind of developing right now, I think we're going to be in really good shape. Yeah. They got, they got the, they got the skills to do it. No doubt about it. And of course you got to, Keep up on the recruiting trail, and uh, we'll transition here into some recruiting news. Um, a couple of big-time local recruits over the last few days have offered up their verbal commitment to the University of Hawaii. Uh, of course, they've they've had a couple of weekends now in June where they've had official visits, kids on campus, uh, and it seems like that's going pretty well. It's created a little bit of a buzz. Um, and the the biggest one is Nazai Car Caravallo, um, 
who is from Kamehameha Schools, linebacker, projects to maybe be an edge guy uh, for the University of Hawaii, committed to the University of Hawaii over the weekend, had previously actually committed to Arizona, um, but then decommitted, came on a visit over the weekend and decided, hey, this is this is where I want to play. He wants to stay home. He's, he's talked about um, trying to change the culture, right? Keep building uh, and kind of return Hawaii football to the glory days. He is actually the Per 24-7, he is the highest ranked in-state recruit uh, from Hawaii. Uh, This is based on the 24-7 sports composite rankings. It gets a little complicated. But basically, by their metric, um, he's the highest ranked in-state kid to to commit to Hawaii since 2012. Um, I think Steven Lakalaka, and there was another one that year. Um, I'll I'll look this up here in a second, Hunter. I got got the list on a different tab. But... um, he's big time like Carvalho maybe flew under the radar a little bit he wasn't you know at Punahou or St. Louis or Kahuku last year Milani some of the bigger schools uh Kamehameha didn't quite have as good a year in 2022 as they did in 2021 um but uh but he's a dude he's absolutely a dude yeah uh Kennedy to to uh La La Masali I I think that was how his last name was uh D uh D tackle for us had SEC offers I think he was at least a three star, um, maybe even, maybe even a four. That yeah, Kennedy Kennedy was really up there. Yeah, so that this one's more on the composite versus the um, the the star ranking uh, because they've had some three stars, they've had some four stars and whatnot over the years, right? And this is since twenty twelve. Uh, Kiha Sai was the other one, uh, uh, the offensive tackle out of Kobe Schools, um, and, and Steven that year as well, the running back out of out of Punahou. Um, of the in-state guys that uh, had committed. You, you've had some other ones, the Leon Jacksons, uh, Jeremy Castro's and whatnot um, that found their way to the University of Hawaii. But, but no, Carvalho coming in um, and, and talked about, uh, you know, having the the desire to kind of stay home um, and and was obviously impressed on his visit. And um, in, a, in an article on 24-7 Sports, um, mentioned Jordan Poole Robinson by name, the the defensive ends coach for the university of Hawaii um, on making a great as, as being the primary recruiter and a guy that uh, obviously made a big impression on him. Yeah. You know, it's one thing to keep local um, recruits here. It's a whole nother thing entirely to keep really good local recruits here um, to keep a three-star guy here and wanting to invest uh, into uh and in our program and and you know defend pride rock what what have you this is uh a humongous win uh we we've seen little wins uh here and there the uh you know having uh's hat right up there with some of the power five schools with that old lineman from img who ended up still signing with miami huge win um having uh the, the qb who's gonna end up signing with tennessee uh, on an official visit to UH, uh, even if just um, for showmanship, huge win to to show that they're interested in still coming around the the program. Uh, Coach Chris Brown in this pipeline that is being created between us and Bishop Gorman over in Vegas, humongous win. Um, and then you see this one with Car Carvalho choosing to decommit from Arizona. Um, and staying staying put staying here at uh um it just shows that this coaching staff um can speak the language can relate to these guys um can get guys bought in um it's not something that they're striving to become it's just it's who they are um and the fact that our good friend jordan poo robinson uh was this integral in keeping this kid here i i it, it makes all the difference in the world having almost an older brother if you will uh with local ties another guy who's from here um played linebacker um d end for university of hawaii um and they, they then moved him over to to tight end whenever he was playing under coach chow but it just I don't know how else to explain it, Jordan. It adds such a weight. It adds such a, um, um, like a, a realism, uh, whenever you're hearing it from another guy from, from Hawaii, uh, that 
I can't speak to. Um, I can't uh, craft the perfect, you know, pitch to a kid like that. It's just not going to come off the same way and have the same sort of power as it would with someone like um, JPR. So um, this is a huge win for the program, huge win for this coaching staff. Man, I, I really feel like this open door policy that they've, you know, they've talked about um, is going to be huge for us. If we just uh, we just put a, a couple of wins on the board, we're going to see them coming back in droves, bro. I really believe that. Yeah. And, and you know, for a guy like Caravallo, who's, as you mentioned, you know, for keeping local kids home is, is one thing, but but being able to keep amongst the top recruits home um is a, is a whole different story and and you mentioned Kennedy Tui Mase Ali uh Carvalho's composite rank is actually just slightly higher um than wow. Kennedy's was in 2013 um uh, a good mention by you there right a three-star linebacker by 24/7 sports outside linebacker maybe more of an edge guy for the University of Hawaii um, good size kids, 6'3", 215, 220 or so. And that's that's as a rising senior in high school. He's obviously going to get bigger, faster, stronger uh, once he gets into the college ranks. Um, you know, with, with him committing, you've got uh, Tui Muti, uh, a kid from the North Shore who attends Punahou Offensive Lineman. He's a pretty high recruit as, as well. Not quite um, to the, the ranking of Carvalho, but uh, amongst the better recruits in the state. And these guys are both, rising seniors. So they're class of 2024 guys. Um, and uh, they join Micah Alejado as, as the three, I believe right now, verbal commitments um, that are are current for the class of 2024. Um, and, and that's a pretty good start to the class as long as all those guys hold that commitment. Right. And, and both yeah. guys kind of talked about staying home and, and, and so, you know, for, for, for the coaching staff and obviously these recruiting trips have left an impression, right? And and Muti in a in an article with twenty four seven sports kind of kind of mentioned, you know, he was he was kind of waiting for a sign. He prayed on it a lot um, after taking the trip over the weekend, and 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 mentioned that um, you know he had prayed over it, and then like fifteen minutes later, uh, Coach Sapolo called, uh, and he was like, "Well, that's my sign uh, to, to check in on him," uh, and I uh, said, "You know what? This this might be this might be the sign I was looking for." Uh, and decided to stay home. And so obviously, you know, what Putin Robinson is doing, what uh, Roman Sapolu is doing recruiting wise and, and collectively as a staff um, making, that was my big takeaway. It's like, man, they, they've, they've really made an impression on these kids. And obviously you try and leave them with a lasting, um, lasting memory on these recruiting trips and, and getting these guys to really consider staying home. Um, because at the end of the day, look, Look, they, these guys can't sign until December, right? And I get that. And we've talked about recruits on this podcast before uh, that have committed to the University of Hawaii verbally and then reneged, right? That, that it's happened multiple times and we get it. That's part of what, what, uh, whether frustrating or, or however frustrated you want to be, that's the case, right? Like this this happens. We've, we've had kids go through that process before. And and all three of the kids that we mentioned, Carvalho, Muti, Alejandro, like they, they could conceivably sign elsewhere when push comes to shove. Um, but I think especially for the two recent verbal commits, um, the good news is these kids so who have come on their trips. Just for are, clar uh, clar clarifying, like these guys still have their senior year to play. They they all have their senior year of high school to play. That's go. correct. Gotcha. Yeah. And so the early signing period would be in December of 20, 2023, right, for the class of 2024. So that's the earliest they can sign. And, and even if, you know, things – turn out differently and they they don't end up here the 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 huge thing for me was that these recruiting trips these visits on campus and, and getting them in the fold uh, are clearly paying dividends like they, it's clearly leaving an impression with these guys um and, and and making a difference which i think is a huge positive a huge positive and hopefully these guys can can um you know see it through and you know i think for a guy like carl ball it's going to be kind of interesting because obviously look he the Pac-12, like if he has a huge senior year, bigger schools are going to come calling. Uh, he's that kind of player. Uh, and so they'll need to continuously be recruiting him throughout the season, I think, uh, you know, and trying to fight off the the the, the SECs and the Big Tens and whatnot as he continues to, 
Um, he hasn't quite broken out yet in terms of just stockpiling offers. They haven't come flooding in just yet. Uh, he's got a, he's got more than enough. Uh, I think, you know, he's, he's shown uh, what kind of caliber athlete he is, but um, yeah, no, this is big. I think this is big uh, particularly because they continue to make inroads locally, um, which I think, you know, is priority number one. And I think having so many of those guys on staff that have direct connections to to Hawaii. Um, and, and I, I just think it's, it's clearly, it's clearly resonating, uh, which I, I am very, very encouraged by. I've gotten to see some video from, um, uh, Savannah Ryers, um, uh, TikTok, and, uh, she's obviously over UH's recruiting now and got to just see kind of day in life of what one of these recruiting trips looks like. And, uh, they usually set up shop in one of the hospitality sky boxes if you will they're not really in the sky they're really just kind of 15 20 feet off the ground if you've been to tc ching um but still really cool they've got a full spread of food usually um lined up right there and they're on ching so right on the outside like you can see the turf with the huge you know h logo and it's cool to see how that has kind of morphed into like our on-campus stadium um and some would say oh it needs to be bigger it needs to be that i mean it's it's enough to get these guys excited with, with in connection with all the other stuff um that's to me what i get really excited about is what what do these recruiting pitches and these experiences that um players like this go through um it looks really really well done and professional and our uh our guys down there are really doing a great job with what they have. So um, to me, it's really encouraging. Yeah, I'm with you. Muti goes about 6'2", 290. Uh, he's a big guy, very mobile as well. Um, some other recruiting news. Uh, you've, you've got a, a – I love that uh, coaches still can't comment directly on verbal commits, but they can, like, retweet the actual player's tweet that says where they're committing uh, verbally. Uh, again, at this point, I keep emphasizing that, but it's like, you know, um, Coach Chang also putting out there um, uh, late last week, uh, tweeting out, uh, Peyton Manoa read tonight, we got a big time commitment, local boy staying home, always for the 808, let's go, hashtag brotherhood. So it's like, okay, well, this it's a Kahuku guy, right? Pey yeah. Peyton Manoa read in all caps. So it's like, all right, it's a, it's a Kahuku guy, we don't know which one, uh, so we got to kind of wait and figure it out. Um, and then the, I'll end the, uh, the, the first half here with, uh, some other recruiting news, um, where coach Chang, uh, tweeted out about, uh, 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 recruit, uh, joining, joining the team, uh, younger brother of a former rainbow warrior. They're like, all right, who, who is that? Uh, and then you, then you just retweet, um, James Milovale's, uh, tweet, who is a big boy uh six six about three fifteen um junior college guy who's uh apparently committing for this coming season so he'll be a 2023 guy he's supposed to join later this summer uh spent last year at hartnell college junior college um and was uh, a all-state selection there in california uh he's originally from seaside california down there uh near san diego actually on the hartnell roster he was listed at six five and a half three forty uh, so a big boy expected to uh, to uh, compete at tackle. I think he maybe has slimmed down a little bit there. Latest reports I saw always he was listed at six six, uh, about three ten. Uh, so maybe maybe get a little more agile to play out on the edge. Uh, projected to be a tackle for the University of Hawaii, a guy coming in um, again for this season. So that's that's pretty exciting as well. The only bummer with some of these uh, local recruits, right, is they got another year of high school. Uh, even though you want them to join the program now because they're so good. Um, but uh, Milo Valle, uh, whose brother Mike started a handful of games for the University of Hawaii back in the day as well, um, started 21 games in his two-year career at the University of Hawaii. Uh, so we'll get his younger brother, James, uh, joining, which is uh, a pretty big deal there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it's it's all just good stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you kind of clarified with uh, – some of these guys and them being verbal commitments and they still have one more season. Cause uh, when the news first broke um, we've already recruited the heck out of our defense for this coming season. And I'm like, mm -hmm. 
but we got to make room for this three-star guy too uh man i don't know what we're gonna do i felt like we were already pretty solid because if you sign a three-star guy jordan at university of hawaii you I, I i'm not in these recruiting talks but you almost guarantee that they're gonna start or at least get a shot at starting you know because you, you got to be thinking about re, uh, retaining and keeping them here and if they can start here certainly maybe they could start somewhere else so um that that was what's in my mind but hey we've got a lot more uh time between when these guys officially sign and when they ultimately put on a uh uh black and green uniform so uh um we'll definitely see how this goes but it it's definitely exciting yeah yeah and we i mean look if if you're bringing in a certain caliber of guy right there there have to be some some sort of understandings and uh you know, that's that's the goal is to keep bringing in a number of those guys. So, yeah, that, uh, uh, for Milo Valley, I think that's pretty exciting. Adds to some offensive line depth, obviously, some some pieces to fill. Both tackles um, have matriculated from last season. So, as uh, I, I think as solid as that interior offensive line is with guys like Sergio Mouassa and Eliki Tanavasa, um, you know, they're, they're going to look to to replace the guys on on the edge. So, that'll be big uh, with getting Milo Valley in there. We'll see. Hopefully, things pan out <clears throat> as well as he gets to work and again set to join uh, a little bit later on this summer all right let's take a quick halftime break come back with the second half we'll get into some coaching news as well uh, for the university of hawaii football program this is hawaii football now from espn honolulu all right second half time here on episode 94 jordan hunter back with you on hfn uh steve irvin not Steve Irwin. Steve Irvin said That's to come in as the new. I don't. I, when I Google them, it kind of led me down a different path. Uh, Steve Irvin said to come in as the new cornerbacks coach for the University of Hawaii. Irvin, uh, who played at UNLV, uh, was is was most recently the University of San Diego's linebackers coach the past three seasons. Uh, he had previously been at USD as well, having served as the Toreros' uh, cornerbacks coach and defensive coordinator uh, for, for a stretch there from like 2011 to 2017 and left to go to UNLV the last couple of, uh, excuse me, in 2018, 2019 uh, and was there and then went back to USD after some, some turnover at UNLV. Obviously they've gone through a couple of different coaches over the last handful of years as well. Um, became familiar with coach Chang, obviously both being in the mountain West the last uh you know half decade or so during different periods um and then uh that kind of completes things right um obviously the departure of a Bellamimi in a corner left uh left avoid the departure of uh coach brown for as the safeties coach going back to utep uh kind of going back home for him uh left a bit of a void as well they they filled that pretty quickly by bringing back jordan putin robinson uh, who was a quality control guy at the end of his tenure. Uh, and then we, we, you know, we talked about on this pod, he had accepted a job at the Citadel at the FCS level. When the, the position coach uh, position came available, they they got him right back. Uh, so he, he went in South Carolina long. Uh, and then the departure of, of Coach Elamimian left, uh, left an opening as well. And they are apparently going to fill that with uh, Steve Irvin. A couple of different outlets had reported that, uh, including Stephen Sai of the Honolulu Star Advertiser. So Irvin will handle the corners. Uh, DC Jacob Yoro, uh, who's got a lot of experience in this area, will oversee the safeties. Uh, Jordan Poo Robinson will handle the defensive ends, which we've talked about. Um, and then also uh, Etienne, defensive line coach, uh, handled the interior defensive line. He's been named a co-defensive coordinator as well, working alongside uh Jacob Yoro there so uh this it appears at this point now uh because he's not that far out we're like 70 something days away uh from Vanderbilt uh this this appears to be now the staff set that'll go forward for the 2023 season yeah I mean certainly uh encouraging uh you can't leave that uh position group uh without a, a main guy, especially with um, guys like uh, Cam Stone coming over in conference from Wyoming. He was uh, all Mountain West, and now he's going to play for us over here in Hawaii. Um, that that requires special attention. So 
um, someone that, I mean, at least on paper, right? Certainly a lot of experience. Um, I'm, I'm sure he will be taught the ways of uh, how we do things out here uh, culturally as well. Um, I, I don't think you're going to be able to just come in and do what you want in this, uh, in this coaching staff with everything that they've been through uh, already in the short time that these guys have been here and the year and what changed, you know, year and four months that all these guys have been on Island. Um, that That's my one thought is uh, from a culture perspective of that, that team of that coaching staff, it, will he be a good fit, but uh, time will tell. So, uh, you know, if, if Timmy signs off on him, I, I believe in Timmy. So um excited about that. And, um, and the, uh, the other one, obviously, we're stoked for our boy uh, JPR getting a, <laughs> getting a a real job uh, on this coaching staff, and uh, he's very well suited. Um, we talked about it earlier with um, the local connections. I don't think we can have enough of guys like him in that uh, in that uh, coach's office. So um, yeah, excited for what this is kind of looking like for our our staff and. Man, we're we're getting into the uh, the dog days of summer right now, Jordan, and I'm just getting excited for season. You said 70 days that that can't come soon enough, if you ask me. Yeah, it, it's like 70 something. I forget exact what the exact number is, but uh, it's it's really not that far off. You know, we're about two and a half months away uh, from that uh, August what's it 26th date at Nashville uh, to take on Vanderbilt. What a, what a road trip that's going to be for Hawaii and and for a lot of the fans, I'm sure. Uh, that'll go check that out. A lot of the folks uh, who listen to us on the pod appreciate you guys, but a lot of them are on the continent, and I, I'm sure that's uh, that's uh, that'll be a fun road trip to take as well um, for some folks, especially those on the East Coast, right? Uh, a lot of Hawaii fans on the oh, East Coast. Virginia, are you are you headed to? Yeah, I don't know. I, has he mentioned? I forget if he mentioned the line. We'll we'll hear from him next week uh, you... on the uh, on the comments. I'm sure, uh, and he'll he'll let us know whether or not he might as well. Right? That's not too far of a trek. Uh, I don't know if you drive it, but, uh, you know, nice little hopper over there from, from VA over to Nashville. And uh, any excuse you can get to Nashville, man, you might as well do it. Uh, and especially if you can catch a Hawaii football game there as well. Yeah, for for Coach Irvin, I'm with you, man. I, I think, you know, he's he's obviously had a lot of experience, uh, coordinator experience as well, which obviously uh, I think is very helpful. But, uh, you know, the fact of the matter is he steps into some big shoes, right? Um, Abe had done such a good job over the years recruiting wise as well. Uh, and because of his solid recruiting, that's a pretty deep position group. It's a position group that I think has got a lot of talent. Um, and especially if you include the safeties as well. And I know he is just going to be focusing on the corners, but they work hand in hand. And, and, and so he's, he's got some talent to work with. Um, he, he's got to continue to develop that. Uh, and so he's, you know, stepping into a big spot, and and I, I I'm with you. I'm I'm fully confident that uh, he should be ready to roll. Um, and and obviously, I think for Coach Chang, you know, it was probably going to be somebody coaching at like the FCS level, right? Maybe a lower level of of the college game at this point in the the off season to go get. But a guy who's got FBS experience, he's got a coordinator experience, and I think all things considered, uh, you know, a guy that that appears pretty ready to to jump right in and, and hit the ground running. Yeah, that's, that's a great call for for someone to jump over um, with um, FBS experience this late in the year is uh, quite a find, to be honest. Uh, midpoint of June, and you're needing to fill a uh, a position coach. That's uh, that, that's a job well done right there because guys are locked in right now, ready for season. So you normally see moves like this back in like maybe you know march or april uh mm -hmm. um so this is certainly late in the game here and uh surprised that it was actually from the mainland and it wasn't uh uh another you know st louis connection or something like that but uh they're they're creating something you know big and legit and uh this is this is impressive to me because it, it wasn't just a, oh we'll we'll fill in a buddy or something like that this is um someone well suited for this role and it's being taken taken seriously yeah and and obviously got to step right in got a vibe and gel with with coach yoro and the rest of that defensive staff in particular and kind of get things rolling 
uh, for a defense that I think a lot of people anticipate to, to take another step forward this season with all of the experience coming back, particularly, um, you know, at the linebacker level and, and in the secondary uh, for this group. And, and Coach Irvin is going to step in there and uh, and try to keep that momentum going forward. We mentioned Nashville. We mentioned Vandy. Um, we'll at some point here in the summer, probably not that long from now, we'll go through the exercise of kind of handicapping the season, picking of the games, uh, and, and maybe prognosticating um, where the University of Hawaii is going to finish up, go game by game, all 13. Uh, not necessarily today, but did want to mention that the uh, the week zero slash one, so that's like the first two weekends, Hawaii's playing two games in that stretch. Uh, the uh, the Vegas lines are up uh, via Circus Sports, um, which is where Mountain West Media Days will be, by the way, so uh, shout out to them. Uh, Hawaii opens as an 18-point underdog at Vanderbilt, and then uh, a week later, Oh, really less than a week later, right? It's a Friday kick against Stanford, uh, Labor Day weekend. Uh, that that opening line right there is uh, Stanford minus 10. So Hawaii double-digit underdogs uh, projected to be the first couple of weeks uh, on the road at Bandy, uh, getting 18 points, and then uh, at home getting 10 against Stanford. Stanford's intriguing to me because we mentioned, we talked a little bit about it last week, but they are very unknown in a way because they've completely revamped things offensively uh brand new coaching staff there as well but uh any any surprise or anything jump out to you there hunter wanted to kind of just slide that in because those lines will probably change uh over the course of the next month or so i'd expect that stanford line to maybe move a little bit as well because i i'm gonna guess that there will be some folks that look at that and say well it's stanford you know they, they, they're not projected to be very good um yet uh, they maybe will score some points, but uh, Hawaii people might like Hawaii getting 10 points at home, uh, perhaps, but uh, we'll see. But any, any, anything jump out to you there? Well, the Vanderbilt line doubled. It was, I think it was nine and a half, and then they bumped it to 18. So I want to know what info they know. I, I want to know what made them multiply that by two, uh, first of all. And then the, the, the second thing, I think the, um, the over under is uh, for points points scored. I think is like forty seven or something like that. Or um, my, my, yeah, I didn't write down the totals. So you you would know better okay. than I. Um, but uh, I uh, I might like action on that one actually. Um, just uh, it's usually tougher for us to score well against um you know big teams like that they were certainly big whenever they came in here that offensive and defensive line were were massive and uh at the same time rarely will teams score north of 45 on us um even when we played Michigan I think it was they 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 put 47 on us or something like that so um with that in connection to us probably not scoring north of 10, I might take that action on the under. So um that 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 was my my point there. But uh yeah, Stanford, Stanford's gonna be an intriguing one. And who knows? I mean, first game with uh the the, the new scoreboard, uh a lot can happen. So uh I'm I don't know, Jordan. I kind of like your your optimism there. Yeah, you know, especially it- I'd be much more intrigued if it was old Stanford where they're just plotting uh, and running the ball and, and not scoring a ton of points, but kind of wearing you down. It's like, oh, okay, you know, that's, that's a better recipe to kind of keep it close. Right. Um, I, I think as teams come out of spring practice, things become so much more clear, right? A lot of the advanced lines are kind of shots in the dark for a lot of these sports books. Uh, when you really don't know what teams with transfers all over the place and rosters still being formulated and, and whatnot. Uh, once you kind of come out, everybody comes out of spring practice and you get into summer, you'll get these updated lines and and really kind of the true lines that come out. And so, you know, whatever the advance or whatever the adjustment off the advance line was for that Vanderbilt game, I'm not terribly surprised. Uh, you know, I thought the number would probably be around – 15 16 and so if it's 18 now maybe it gets bet down maybe people like that Hawaii getting a lot of points against a Vanderbilt team that you know was okay in the SEC last year but uh you know I think the the performance uh in Manoa was maybe their one of their better offensive outputs of the season last year 
uh, after a slow first half, but just kind of got it going in the second half. So not surprised to see Hawaii as underdogs here. And I think they will be. Um, I think you mentioned it uh, a couple of weeks ago, like the Vegas win total for Hawaii is three and a half in a 13 game season. Uh, so they're, they're not going to be favored in a lot of games, at least initially. Uh, if they obviously start winning some games or start being very competitive, things will shift a little bit. Um, but not surprised to see them against these two power conference opponents. Um, maybe a little surprised Stanford, uh, a double digit favorite on the road uh, for a team that's also projected to to win like less than five or four games or something like that um, against Hawaii. But I think, you know, power conference coming in, that, that'll uh, that'll kind of be very, uh, very status quo in a lot of ways in the projection. And so for Hawaii, you know, that little bulletin board material, right? You put that up on the uh, on the bulletin board to get them ready uh, for what uh, they hope is a fruitful season. Absolutely, yeah. I, I it's always a roll of the dice against uh, Power Five schools, but uh, it's also football, and anything can happen. And there's always three, sometimes four games for UH's season that really comes down to ball security and. Uh, um, uh, I call it a game in the trenches where uh, one mistake or one big play can really turn the tides of the entire game. And um, that's usually games where we rely heavily on special teams. And I could see that home opener against Stanford being uh, just that. So uh, certainly excited for uh, that Labor Day weekend. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's going to be fun to see how this team starts, obviously, with three of those first four games, quite the doozy. Um, did want to update everybody that uh, UNLV game, uh, UH at UNLV, late September. Uh, kickoff time is set, 1 p.m. in Vegas. Uh, that's 10 a.m. Hawaii time. So uh, if you were planning, you know, your flights getting set uh, and wanted to to head up there, you can you can get on the red eye. You'll be there in plenty of time uh, if you want uh, or head up a little bit early because I know there are quite a few people out there uh, working there. Um schedules cashing in their miles uh there'll be a lot of hawaii fans there at allegiance stadium um come i think it's september 30th against unlv so uh in case you were wondering that's the kickoff time and then for for the folks back here at home that's a 10 a.m hawaii kickoff time so uh nice little nice little brunch football for the hawaii fans if you'll be here at home all right uh as we wrap things up did want to kind of end it with uh, a little bit of a shout out uh, i'm sure you read in the news over the last couple of weeks, uh, Alex Kaloy, former University of Hawaii quarterback, uh, scored the first touchdown for a Hawaii player at the Los Stadium way back when, former Lelihua great, uh, longtime dentist as well uh, in the West Oahu community, uh, passing away last week. So I wanted to send our aloha to his family. Uh, and uh, one thing that uh, I think that uh, Coach Chang has done um, that's really made me just stoked is, is tying this program back to the past and, and connecting things. And I think we saw that under Rolo a bit as well. Um, but just uh, learn the history, right? Making it known, getting these guys very well aware of what they represent. And uh, I think some of the recruits are resonating with that as well. Uh, and Alex Kaloy, one of the names that I think they'll, they'll if they don't know, they should know. Um, one of the guys in a, in a pretty fun era there in the 70s. <laughs> um with that hula t offense and uh much love to to his family and uh one of the one of the great names in hawaii football history yeah absolutely i think any way that you can educate uh current players on uh the history i think uh just adds so much value not just to the current team but uh how you think about the h you know and how you think about um the, the what the team represents in the in the community i i remember uh, learning about some of that stuff whenever I was there and I'm not from here. So every time I got a chance to learn some of that stuff, it was um, incredibly valuable uh, to me. And yeah, just, um, you know, those guys like, uh, uh, like Alex uh, paved the way and set the foundation for uh, who and what we are today in a lot of ways. So um, certainly uh, thankful for, uh, their investment into the program, uh, also his play, uh, that's, that, that, that's very cool. And then to reintegrate, if you will, into society and, 
um, hold a profession like dentistry um, and become a member of the community in that in that way is uh, carries a lot of weight and a lot of value. Um, certainly something we're striving towards if you're a, a UH player. So uh, hats off to him and um, nothing but aloha from from us to the uh, Chloe family. Yeah, no doubt about that. All right, that'll do it for us here on episode 94. Big thanks to Spectrum Mobile and Hawaii USA Federal Credit Union as always. Uh, shouts to Hunter and Jonathan as well. Uh, been a lot of fun for us. Hopefully some more recruiting news throughout the summer as well. And uh, again, we're we'll counting down to kick off uh, a little over 70 days away uh, until Hawaii heads over to Nashville to take on Vanderbilt. More coming your way next week. We'll see you then, everybody. Take care. Aloha. You've been listening to Hawaii Football Now with Jordan Halley and Hunter Hughes, all from ESPN Honolulu.